Greetings, everybody. Welcome once again to the Rec Poker Podcast, sponsored, as always, by Running Aces Casino Racetrack and Hotel and the great website AMP. And normally I say the great website AMP, but we really have to say it this time because the great website AMP's owner, Mark Pershawn, is joining us for the episode. Uh, so we're going to chat with Mark as, as well as the whole panel, because in this chat edition, we are going to look back on the past 12 months. We're looking at it kind of like a year in review. I know it doesn't sync up with the calendar, but it syncs up with the Rec Poker calendar because we launched the new website last July. So we're going to kind of look at what's happened over the past year, celebrate some things, talk a little bit about what's coming up, uh, but just kind of hang out and see where everybody's at on that sort of stuff. Uh, first, we're going to introduce the panel. Uh, my name is Steve Fredland. I go by Rec Poker Steve in the Poker Stars home game. And I found a quote that uh, isn't ascribed to anybody, but I love it for our discussion tonight. It says, make this year so amazing that last year gets jealous. Oh, I like that, Steve. Well, I'm not used to going first in this little round off, but I'm Jim Reed, Bluff Serini in the home game. And you can find out about me and other members of the Wrecking Crew by going to rec.poker slash crew. And I'm here with a quote from Benny Binion, trust everyone, but always cut the cards. <laughs> And I'm John Somsky, also known as Poker Geek MN Everywhere. And I have a quote from the former WSOP, or maybe he was, maybe he was at Bellagio, but he was a term, tournament director since then retired. To be a poker champion, you must have a strong bladder. <laughs> that's true, man. I think that's a, that's a good point. All right. Well, we'll bring in Mark here in a second, but just so you guys know, we're going to chat, but then after that, we're going to talk about some of the things going on in the community beyond what we talked about. Uh, so the Rec Poker Weekly Tournament at Running Aces, we're going to be announcing a few details about that. Really excited about that. Uh, we've got our road trip coming up to Florida at the end of August. Uh, we've got our home game winners. Who won pins this last week? I know you're all sitting on pins and needles to find out who won pins. We'll talk about that, some other stuff going on. Um, and But welcome to those who are premium members sitting in on the chat. Uh, if you don't know, if you're a premium member, you can sit in on these podcasts. Uh, engage, ask questions, all that kind of fun stuff. So make sure you do that if you are a premium member. But with that, uh, let's first of all introduce the great one. Uh, I know he loves in his humility being introduced as the great one. And I know I usually hold that for John Somsky, but you guys are both IT professionals. So I think you both qualify. So Mark Prashan, welcome to the Rec Poker Podcast. Hey, thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah, I'll pretend to mind be being called great and all these accolades. I'll <laughs> I'll nice. feign humility. How about that? Yeah, I know. Well, you've been on the show, obviously, before, and you are a yeah. huge part of what we're doing at Rec Poker and beyond, uh, building all these websites. Uh, so I guess, you know, tonight, in, in many ways, is sort of celebrating the work that you've done. <laughs> you know, I know we're celebrating kind of the last year, the relaunch of the website, but you were instrumental in that whole thing, and we love it. So first of all, thank you for all the work that you're doing for Rec Poker. Well, you're welcome. And it's, it's truly a pleasure. Um, I've, I, you know, you and I connected on Twitter, I think a few years ago now, just because, you know, I was a, a fan and liked the podcast and liked what you were doing. And so really happy to have be, be able to look back now and see that, you know, we've, we've built kind of a bigger thing together and there's a lot of runway ahead. So it's a lot of fun. Oh, I love that. I love the runway ahead. We're going to make last year jealous as good as it was. Last year. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> so this, so today's just kind of an open panel discussion. Let's just think about, man, what's, what's happened in the last year? Because I, I know I'm not naturally good at doing that. I'm always thinking about what's next, what's next, what's next, we could do this. And I don't often take time to reflect on what's happened over the next year. So I think this is just an opportunity for us to talk about what stands out over the last year. And maybe the obvious place to start is the website. Uh, maybe, you know, especially Jim and Mark, you guys have been really focused on working on the website. Maybe I'll just start with you guys kind of talking about what, what stands out for you guys over the last year of after launching this, this new website. Well, I think, you know, Steve, you said it best at the beginning where you said, you know, Rec Poker is so much more than a website. The website is really just a tool for our community to use, to exchange ideas, to share uh, learning and to hang out together. And I think it's just so much better at that than the old <laughs> website it's just i'm just so happy with how well everything comes together the calendar is so organized and integrated you can get join the groups and they're linked up to the forums and i just think like as a tool it's just so much better at sharing what we're all about and putting people in touch with other people of similar interests i know mark just makes it all look easy waving his magic wand around there but for the uninitiated like me it's just it's just great to see it from the outside 
Mark, what's been sort of the, I know it's been, it's been a big year working together. We we're in, in meetings all the time, working stuff, putting things together. Um, what feels like uh, gratifying to you? What do you look at it now and say, boy, I'm so glad this is going the way it is. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, I think to your point, none of this works without the community aspect of it. Um, it, a website without any people there, you know, is just some code sitting on a server somewhere. So that's kind of the biggest thing is to see there actually be interaction and, you know, facilitating the different events and, you know, the different podcasts and guests and forums and all the things that go into it. Um, it's a lot of fun to see from, from a technical standpoint. Um, I feel like last year, um, even during COVID, we were like, let's make a site that does all these things that we want it to do. And I, I feel like we did that. You know, we, we got a lot of these things, these components kind of working together, you know, events and forums and groups and search for other members and connect with people. But then I feel like this year, specifically in the month of, months of June and July, we kind of took it to the next level. And now rather than just let's get everything to work, let's get it to work really well. So I feel like everything is much tighter and more user-friendly. And I think it should encourage a lot of growth and, you know, just make it a lot more, uh, even more fun to, to hang out at rec.poker. Yeah. So, and and I think like one thing, just on that note, like I was in there and I, and someone asked me, is there a way I can get like notifications when the event I want to join is coming up? And like, you can even just go there and export the event right into your Google calendar and stuff like that. Like it's just the technolo the technological advance has been amazing, Mark. So really impressed. Cheers. Yeah, so I was just going to say, yeah, so if you haven't been out to Poker for a while, uh, it's always been good functional uh, website, but yeah, it really has gotten more crisp with the work that these guys are, are, have done. So I uh, really want to encourage you to get out there, or if you're a member and you haven't really perused the website for a while, it might be worth your time to kind of go through there. It's a lot easier to use. It's a lot more integrated. Uh, I think you're really going to enjoy that. And I think the, the, the one question I really have is, um, obviously, there, there's a number of training websites out there. And we don't classify ourselves as like a pure training website. We are a community website that does training. You know, so there's Solve for Why, there's Poker Coaching, there's all these websites, Learn Pro Poker, the ones that are, they're great and we endorse them and we have partnerships with them and we use their video for study groups and different things like that. So we love them, but their focus is on training. You know, ours is a little bit different. We have training elements, but our focus is like we've been talking about community, building relationships. So I'm curious how does that play into, I mean, what are, the, what are the challenges? What are the opportunities? How does that play into actually building a website with a community mindset, you know, beyond just having forums? You know, as you think about integrating community into this, how does that change what we do and how are we doing it? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the hard thing for me and Mark will tell you is that I'm kind of a control freak. It's hard for me to like let go and not micromanage certain things. And that extends to the membership too. So like when we started, we wanted to, this is what we wanted to do. Let's build it in this rigid structure and then let, let's like force the membership to adhere to it. And I think the, just philosophically, the, the change to just, let's just follow the passion of our members. If, if members are forming groups about this kind of thing, let's, let's work in that direction. Let's try and find a time that fits with the people that are actually taking part of it. Let's just organically grow around our membership and the interests of the crowd and just uh, uh, doing less telling and more asking. Um, and I think just like building, building a website with that in mind as well, that was, and, and also just recognizing that not everything happens on the website, like rec poker is bigger than a website. So we've got a free YouTube channel where we put a lot of our free videos out there. Um, you know, that's not, we, we, we tried to do everything with the website and I think it's better that we're kind of listening to the community and streamlining things effectively like that. Yeah, Mark, what, what do you think of that, that question there? How do you, as, as a programmer, you know, Jim's sort of looking at it from the user perspective, the community perspective, and I know you sure. are too, but you're also, you know, typing HTML or something. Uh, you're, you're doing <laughs> that sort of thing to actually make things sure. magically appear. So how does that work in your world? Yeah, it's been cool because in the last year, we've, we've had to restructure things because of growth, which is a great problem to have. I love mm -hmm. solving those sorts of problems. Yeah, me too. Um, like uh, we had to restructure how we delivered uh, like content, like new learning with partners content and new, you know, videos and podcasts and stuff because there was so much of it available. You know, every day there was like one or two things that were dropping on the website. And so we had to kind of reconfigure how we're doing that. Um, 
and, and Jim touched on it too with like the groups. Um, we, we have enough people in rec.poker now where there's different groups kind of naturally forming. Like um, one that just comes to mind because I was working on it earlier is Pet Vets Travel Group. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, people interested in traveling for rec poker trips. And I know there's been the rec poker road trips and that's kind of, uh, it seems like there's maybe some momentum around that. So for me, I have to try and, you know, go behind the scenes and I, I in an ideal world, I want to be the only person that has to think about what's going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to make it as easy as possible for all the users and, uh, you know, even the panel here to it just be an awesome tool that connects everything. And so that's kind of my goal. But I, I really enjoy trying to solve the puzzles and make it look that easy. That's that's the goal anyway. Well, that's one of the things that I know I love working with you about because you are a problem solver. I mean, there's there's a lot of people that can program and code and do exactly what you tell them to do. And you're willing to do that. But I mean, you're also looking at like, how do we optimize this? And you understand community. My God, you flew up to Minnesota from Texas to go to Rec <laughs> Poker Day at Running Aces. Like, you know, right. you, you get it. You understand community. So that's why it's so great to work with you. And I know, you know, you've you've gotten other projects through this. And if, if you if anybody out there's, we didn't want to make this commercial, but if, if you, anybody's out there looking for a website designer, I, I can't endorse Mark enough. So uh, give him a shout. If you don't know how to get a hold of him, uh, get a hold of me and I'll get, I'll connect you. But I want to share Paul uh, Parker, one of our premium members in the chat said community nails it. Uh, website brings us all together. Nothing else like it out there. A place to hang out with a great poker community. I explore it every day and I'm making good poker friends. And I tell you, yeah, I mean, I see Jim's kind of touching his heart. I do too. Like whenever I get those emails, like, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm building relationships. I'm making friendships. Like I love that so much. Like that is, that is music to my ears. So I, I'm curious, um, and I'm just kind of rambling here. You guys will have to interrupt, but as we're still kind of on the website topic, I'm, I'm going to put John on the spot a little bit, just because I know John's been in the poker industry forever. He's an ambassador for anti Up Magazine. He's, you've seen a million websites, you've seen a million forums, you've kind of been there, done that, training sites, whatever, kind of where do you, not, not ranking rec poker, but how do you sort of characterize rec.poker you know, in the midst of the poker industry? Like, what is the niche that you see as you're looking at it from a usability perspective, user perspective, member perspective? For me, the main thing is, it, we always talk about community, but there's there's a quality to that community. It's that we are accepting of one another. Our uh, goal is to learn. That means everyone who comes is willing to have good conversations over what the right play is. No one assumes that they have all of the answers or that they can't learn from anyone else. Uh, so right now we're still in that sweet spot where you know every just about every member we have is a great person that is part of this community. Um, and you other uh, communities like two plus two was the the biggest poker forum for the longest time. But uh, over time, as it's grown, it's become quite toxic. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and you get a lot of signal to noise ratio. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of junk on those forums to get any content of value. Uh, so I, I think right now we have a, a great community that's full of good information and we enjoy uh, sharing that with each other in a non-threatening way. Oh, I love that. I, I love hearing that. Um, you know, we didn't plan that. So that was good, John. That was a great commercial. I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we aren't, we're, we're not a platform for people to share their knowledge and, you know, and just ramble on and just to post anything about, I mean, we're, we didn't just create a platform for people to spew, right? A lot of times it's just, okay, we're creating a platform, Twitter, Facebook, you know, two plus two, all these things. They're, they're ways for people to share whatever they want to share we are building a community. And so that comes with a different re- level of responsibility, different type of member. And so, yeah, we've said this before. We've, you know, we've had some tough conversations early on with people that just sort of viewed it as a platform to spew. I mean, <laughs> you don't belong here. Um, you know, that's okay. There's plenty of places for you to do that. And so I think, you know, um, props to the, the new Cleveland baseball team. We'll be guardians, right? We're the, we're the guardians of community in a sense. Uh, and so I love hearing what you said, John, because I think, I think it sort of is a is almost a, a self-selecting sort of thing where people come in 
if they spew a little bit, they're not really accepted. People kind of ignore them and then they move on. Uh, so sometimes we don't even need to get involved. So I love hearing that for sure. So, so the website really is, it's a, it's a platform for a community and I love what you guys are doing. And uh, anything, anything else about the website? I, I kind of want to look at some other things that happened over the last year, but anything else from a website perspective that you guys want to share that you're pretty excited about what's happened over the last year, Jim? I guess, I guess just, just um, how, how it's all tied in together now and how, you know, just go to the homepage. You should be able to find so much right there. What's coming up today, what we, with videos we released recently and um, yeah, just use it as a tool to connect. That's the real thing. Connect with ideas to connect with people. Um, yeah, that's, that's my big picture. Love it. Mark. Yeah. Uh, to what Jim said, just go to the homepage um, right up at the top. You can jump into you know, kind of the, the big hitters, you know, different ways to engage videos, forums, players, I'm sorry, groups rather. Um, but then right below that, there's a, a little area called this week where you can see what's going on for this week. I mean, every event in terms of, you know, whether there's like a hand history review or a podcast recording or Twitch stream, you can just see at a glance what's going on. Um, and then below that, all the learning with partners stuff. There's so much content on the site that I definitely recommend folks frequently check out what's going on because there is some high level stuff going in there and a lot of it's available uh, for you know just anyone coming through the site and then of course there's even more for premium members. I love it and one thing I point out about the website too that a lot of people I don't either they don't know about it they don't take advantage of it is how, how John and us have kind of tied this into uh, to the home games with the website so if you're playing the home game and, you know, somebody comes up, something, somebody named Quark, there's somebody named Quark on there, like Q-U-A-R-K on there. You can, and you're wondering, who is this guy? Like, you can actually go to the rec.poker website, go to the members area, and you can search for Quark. Now, if they're playing in the home game, they have to have a free community membership, which means Quark will show up. Now, if that person chose not to make their information public, you won't see their first name, you won't see their last name, you won't see any information. But sometimes people make that stuff public. And so if you're like, man, I kind of like how this guy plays, but I'm, I want to actually address them by their first name, you can actually go there and say, oh, it's Paul. And now in the chat, you can put a note that it says, hey, this is Paul, you know, on Poker Stars. And you can start saying, hey, Paul, nice hand or whatever. And that's how relationships are built. I see that all the time in the home games where people are like, hey, Billy, great play. I love how you did that. And like later, I'll talk to that person like, no, I just met them in the home game. I've never met that person. Like they're building relationships. So I think that's a cool tool uh, for the website as well. You can actually start to put names uh, to, the, to the usernames. Uh, so I think that's a pretty cool integration that we have. Well, cool. Uh, so let's talk about other stuff over the over the last year. Anything else kind of standing out for you guys over the last year in the world of rec poker? That's like, man, that was a pretty sweet moment or experience or whatever. Jim, I mean, we just got to talk about since we're talking about home games, we got to talk about the home game expansion plan. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe plan isn't right. <laughs> there wasn't right a plan. It was COVID, <laughs> unless that was planned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, just 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 how much that's erupted. And I don't think we really credited how much community building goes in through those actual home games themselves. Yeah. The, free, the free home games that anyone can play, um, but people take it seriously. People are really trying their best to win that pin. You know, some of us with more success than others. And uh, there's, there's, a re <laughs> there's a real camaraderie um, developing in those home games. And, I th and you're right, man. Like people, people have made real friends. I I've made real friends with people. They're not mm -hmm. just Canadians. Um, <laughs> uh, with oh, people just, well, oh, well, yeah. well, you know, the cream rises <laughs> to the top, John. What do you want to say? But uh, but just like there, there, it's really it, it, yeah. it, it's a social tool. I, I'm really impressed with that. So I just want to say thanks again to John for uh, taking that out of his sleeping schedule for the last year. Well, it's and even, even to that point, like it, it's so funny. I, I like some Canadians as well. Paul says in the chat, but like you know, <laughs> even to the point where we did a we did like the Dakota Poker Tour. We went up there and like. We met people that we'd only played with online. Like, what's your username? Oh, that's you. And we did the same thing, the Rec Poker reunion. Like, we're all standing around in a circle, introducing ourselves by our username. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, that's you. You're, you know, you're Captain Walleye. That's pretty sweet. Uh, so, yeah, that's been pretty fun. All right. Anything else standing out, guys? I think the uh, Reckies. Yeah. That we had at the beginning of the year. Just everyone excited about uh, sharing and 
seeing if they got their name mentioned because they came in next to last the most number of times or won the most or whatever the case may be. I like that you called that one out, the Ricky Bobby Award, right? If he <laughs> yeah. asked, I believe Randy won that one. Yeah, it was Roadster. That's right. Yeah, that's so awesome. That was super fun. I think we have big plans for that. And I think, you know, uh, Colin Anderson, Danny Schneider, helped put mm. that thing together, helped MC it. Uh, shout out to those guys. But that was super fun. We had all these pros that submitted videos. And uh, yeah, that was a great highlight too, for sure. I think, uh, I guess. Or go, go ahead. Mark, did you have something? Uh, yeah, I just the thing that stands out to me is the live events coming back. Mm. Obviously, we had Rec Poker Day. Uh, what was that? Uh, late February last year. Saint Oswald just before. Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, I wonder if that'll come to be known as like Black Friday or something again <laughs> in the poker world because it was a big yeah, shift. Yeah. You know, it threw a bunch of people online and into mm -hmm. uh, the the online home game, and uh, I think that helped build our community a lot. But it's fun to look to what's coming and that's probably where you're transitioning there steve but the the live events and the road trips is really cool to be able to meet up with people that you've you know connected with online yeah the road trips the road trips are kind of the next thing it'll be interesting to see what happens with the home games if people stay engaged or start going back live or whatever the road trips have been so fun oh my gosh down in iowa john and i John, of course, ran deeper than anybody in the main event. <laughs> he, had to, he had to outdo me. Thanks a lot, John. But I didn't win the tournament, so I did not win. <laughs> from, yeah, but 31st out of 900 or something, not, not too <laughs> shabby. Good. But, but, 32nd. You know, but. 32nd wasn't? Oh, sorry. I'm already bragging you up. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were better than that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we had a great turnout, had a great time down there. Um, despite my getting Lyme's disease the last few days of the thing and, <laughs> and being miserable, but it was a great time. So yeah, more road trips. Uh, we're going to keep going on that. So I love that one. Jim, did you have something else you want to share? Uh, the one thing that I'm really um, enjoying are the Saturday study groups. That was something <laughs> that we just started. We wanted to give people another chance that if they're not in the, you know, Monday, in the, if they're not in the weekday evening time zone to come and get together and get a piece of some of this. And there's been a great uh, response. People from not just the Rec Poker Premium members, but Learn Pro Poker members are coming into the LPP study group that we're doing. My own group coaching session on Saturdays using Poker Tracker to review hands and databases for folks has been great. Um, just getting more of this like group discussions. We're having like three or four different kind of engaged group uh, discussion events every week. And um, uh, yeah, taking on different time zones. And uh, yeah, it just, it just feels like there's, there's a something for everybody there. It's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, and I think related to that, one thing that sticks out to me is just how it feels like everybody that's involved at a pretty deep level is finding their niche has kind of found mm. their niche over the last year. You know, it used to be, you know, we went to, we had one podcast a week and we were doing the chats thing and we had seven of us on the panel thing. And that was great. But then we added a second podcast that was more focused on strategy folks on the forums. And, you know, some of us are, we like the chats thing more. Some of us like the, the strategy more. And so we kind of split that way as far as who's doing what, and it wasn't strategic. We just said, do whatever you want to do, do where, where the life is. But like, I think like, you know, John just crushing the home games and we got Rob really owning the book study, Taylor, Twitch, Chris oh. content, Mark website, Andrew affiliates and learning with partners, you know, Jim, you're doing all your study groups and the database histories and all that stuff. Like, it's just so fun to see everybody, you know, pet vet with the in inclusivity piece and the travel piece. And it's just so fun to see everybody kind of finding their niche. And I think what we've done largely because of what you guys have done on the website too, is just sort of given the freedom for people to find your niche like what do you love to do what are you passionate about uh and then of course i've got a ted talk in like three days and i'm talking about how do you become more vibrant in your life and so this is like front of mind but like just what are you passionate about go do that and i think the more that we can equip people to just do what you're passionate about rather than fitting everybody into a single box uh but you know i'm rambling a bit but just sort of like everybody finding their niche in the last year has been so fun to watch I got to jump off there for one sec because like it, that's exactly what it's all about here at Rec Poker. I was just talking to, I, I guess I'm breaking a little news here. Our newest wrecking member, our newest member of the wrecking crew, Eric Jim, who's coming on board. Binkley. Um, Binkley, the one and only, you know, him in the home game. I become <laughs> Binkley, Binkley in there. Uh, he's just a perfect example of someone who's just gotten kind of more involved over the course of the last year and a bit. And he had this idea of how he wanted to do this event, this peel, the play, explain, and learn. And it was just, 
yeah, man, let's let's support that. We just built this whole thing in his vision. Um, he's running it every week now, and premium members are welcome to come and join him. Uh, and it's just one of those things, like, everyone's come here because they're passionate about bringing something to the world of recreational poker. Mm -hmm. And we all have our areas that we're passionate about, and Rec Poker's given us a chance to share that passion with the rest of the poker community. And I think, like, that's the gift that, that we miss here sometimes, is that we're all here. We're here legitimately doing what we love. Yeah. And so I, I got to thank you, Steve, just for, for bringing me in and giving me a chance to, to share what I love about poker with everybody. It's helped me a lot, not only as a poker player, but just as a, as a happier person. And I think as like a, a better friend and, and a better person. So I really do have to thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you guys have done the same for me. Like I'm not doing a lot of this stuff. Like that's the same, like I'm doing what I really love to do. And you know, I love to hear people's stories and kind of get, get behind the, get behind there and kind of build relationships that way. So it's, it's, it works for all of us, right? And I think that's that's a healthy community is letting everybody kind of find their niche uh, and helping them and let them just kind of explode in that niche. So that's super cool. Well, I've got a, I've got a few other things. Anything standing out for you guys that you want to share still? I've got I've got a few more things that these are. I'll just kind of go through these pretty quick. And if you want to stop and pause on a weekend, but I was making a list on my way home from disc golfing today. And I'm like, oh man, what are some of the things? I'm like, there's a long list of things. Uh, but you know, some of the things that really stood out to me again over the past year, the Canadian invasion, like the home games are one thing, but just like everywhere I saw at one point, the top six players in the home game, the only six players left were all Canadians or something. I'm, I love that. So Jim and his Grolsch and Pet Vet and Stewie and all these folks up north are really cranking on some things. So that's pretty fun. Uh, I know I still owe the old Canada thing. So apparently there are some plans. So uh, we're going it's to happening. Vegas, Vegas in, in whatever, September, October. So uh, I think there's some plans being made to, to do the old Canada thing. Um, more great partnerships. We continue to add. People are, people are loving what Rec Poker is doing. And again, it's not about us individually, but collectively as a community, people are noticing this is something different. Um, and so we're getting all these partnerships with people that are saying, you know, I think this would be good for poker. I think this is something that we're happy promoting, happening, partnering with. It feels safe because they know that we're not going to be a bunch of idiots uh, making them look bad. Um, so that's been fun. Uh, the Twitch thing, uh, to see that start to explode and really find now Taylor's really going to own that thing and run with that thing, twitch.tv slash rec poker. That's going to be super fun to see go. Jim, did you have something there? Oh, no, I'm just really excited about that. I was yeah. talking to Taylor about that uh, just yesterday, and we've got some big plans. People go to twitch.tv slash rec poker right now and subscribe and uh, join the channel there because he's going to be giving away prizes. He's going to be doing a lot of in-depth strategy stuff on the new Twitch channel, and there's going to be some prizes for the first few people to sign up. So when you hear this, go over and sign up right now. Trust me. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing... You know, it just, it dawned on me the other day that this is the 299th episode of Rec Poker. Like, that's crazy. I mean, we're, we're not really, we're not planning any big 300 or whatever, maybe a 500, but just like, that's insane. Like, that's insane to me that we've had 300 episodes of this thing. And I'm just, I'm so delighted with where we're at now and how we're doing things. So that's fun. Uh, I'll try to speed it up a little bit. We had the Fareed Jatin training uh, where a bunch of us were trained by Fareed Jatin. Uh, who was ranked like third in the world at the time, just a stud uh, of a player. Martin Jacobson, who's won the, the main event, uh, he joined him for a few sessions. So uh, that was a pretty good highlight uh, from the year. Uh, one of my favorite, we had a number of great uh, interviews, but Veronica Brill, I just had so much fun. Maybe part of it was that John and I were in Iowa in the same room and just the, it was just sort of fun just to be there, but uh, she just was made me laugh the entire time. Uh, we had our new logo launched, which super excited about the logo. That's super fun. Merchandise, uh, we were able to start offering different colors. And now all these different color schemes are out there. You got Jim wearing his Pittsburgh stuff. And uh, I know I get uh, now, so, so Gibber, Jim Gibson wants Purdue colors. And he's telling me they're not Steelers <laughs> colors, they're Purdue colors. I don't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted to make that very clear, but that's fun because now people are ordering red hats and white sweatshirts and all that stuff. So that was fun. I'm almost done. And the, kind of the last thing that I thought of was just the discord uh, people out there real time railing. There's maybe a handful of people that are really active. Like when they're all on the Sunday grind, they're all like, they're watching each other's tables and they're like, Hey man, nice hand and way to go. And uh, that's been super fun too. So those are the things that <laughs> came into my mind after disc golfing in 93 degree heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you, you reminded me of two more. The first, 
the, the second podcast, doing the forums podcast every week. I mean, that has just been such a freaking blast. And just being able to get together with the panel and talk strategy, having guests on every once in a while. And I, and I just, the, the fact that premium members can come on the show and meet Rec Poker Nation and get, uh, uh, you know, get introduced and talk about their own forum posts. I just think that's so cool. And we have so much fun with that. So if you're a premium member, I mean, if you're not a premium member, still go and post your hand histories in the forum. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're a premium member, uh, reach out if there's one that you're really interested in, you want to come on the show. I, I do email folks from time to time and say, hey, I, th I saw this post and I thought this would be a great one for the show. But don't wait for the invitation. Reach out and let me know. Um, yeah, it, I just I'm, I'm having so much fun with that. I can't <laughs> it's too bad Jim doesn't have any fun doing anything. <laughs> Well, so that's kind of the list that I had. I don't know if you guys have sparked anything or if you guys have any other ideas, but you know, the, the goal of this, this episode is really, I know I do a lot of vision casting. I do a lot of looking forward. We have a lot of guests. We're always talking about where we're trying to go and kind of community we're trying to build. And I know we touched on that a bit today, but this was really about let's celebrate. Let's celebrate what's been done. The website is sort of a, an easy way to mark time on that, but man, I've been a, it's been a pretty cool year, you guys. Absolutely. All yeah, it's right. been great. Great. Yeah. To be well, thanks to you guys. And again, I, I say thanks, and you guys say thanks to me. But at the end of the day, when it's a community and you love what you're doing, you all just kind of, you all just kind of do it, right? It just kind of take, takes a village to do this stuff. And as long as we love what we're doing, it's going to keep keep cruising forward. So part of me is like, uh, you know, we've seen really good growth, and obviously growth is a good thing. Part of me really hopes that we can figure out a way through the website or whatever. Uh, as we continue to grow and get more exposure and the poker world really opens up to us, how do we continue to make the big small? How do we continue to mm. allow people to have avenues to build relationships where they're not just a number? So I think that's going to be our challenge probably for the next year is try to figure out as the numbers, you know, continue to grow, how do we make sure that people aren't just lost in the shuffle, that they're connected and that they're building relationships? So I think that is our, our next challenge. All right. So with that, so I'll wrap it up there. All my, all my pontificating about uh, the joy that was the last year. But Jim, maybe what we'll do is we'll we'll play the Jonathan Little spot and we'll come back and then we'll do the home game results and talk a little bit about some of the things that are specifically going on uh, in rec poker. Have you ever wondered whether you should call a preflop raise or a three bet instead? All the time. What do you do when you have a flush draw? Do you raise it or do you just call? What do you do with Ace King when you miss the flop? Are you tired of guessing about what the right play is with your particular hand? Well, my name is Jonathan Little, and I am a two-time World Poker Tour champion and creator of PokerCoaching.com, where we offer over a thousand interactive hand quizzes where you play a hand and then get real-time feedback from our world-class pros. Don't guess and don't stress. Just register for your free account at PokerCoaching.com slash RecPoker right now. Nice. Thanks to Jonathan Little for being a, being a partner with us uh, on the show. That is fantastic. And I know Jim is smiling because he's reading the chat. Uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and go there. So first of all, uh, I've got to rem remind Veronica to send those pink ears. Yeah. So we haven't seen the pink ears yet. And now Paul's idea is maybe the pink ears plus O Canada together. I'm not sure... I'm, I'm <laughs> confident enough to pull that off, <laughs> but, and I'm not much of a drinker, but maybe I, if I just drink a whole bunch, maybe I can then do all the liquid I want courage, to huh? <laughs> Yeah. Come at us, Grolsch. We need a liquid sponsor. Grolsch, oh, come, at us. Yeah. come at us, Grolsch. We're listening. Yeah, I am, Grolsch I am quite show. certain that it would be worth seeing you <laughs> sing old Canada in Veronica Brill's little bunny ears. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll. Maybe if she's there, we can do a duet. Maybe if you'll let me do oh, it. Oh yeah, there you go. She's got that Edmonton connection. I love it. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I you know I like the idea of letting premium members come into the podcast recording, but maybe we shouldn't allow them to chat ideas <laughs> about you on the live stream. stream. <laughs> <laughs> this this may backfire really really fast. So, uh, that's pretty fun. Well, let's talk a little bit about what else is going on around Rec Poker Nation. A couple of real quick things that I teased at the outset. Uh, so running aces, we are in regular conversation with them. I know a lot of you folks are Minnesota based. Not everybody is, uh, but Rec Poker uh, is partnered with Running Aces from the beginning. Uh, and so it is a home casino for a number of folks that are listening. So if you're wondering, why do you keep talking about running aces? Well, there's a fair number of Minnesotans that are, that are interested in this. They are starting tournaments again. Uh, the last thing that we have heard is they are launching them on August 10th. I've been told that we can say this. 
uh, with maybe a caveat that things could possibly change. Uh, but it looks like they're going to run a couple tournaments a week. One of those is going to be co-branded as the Rec Poker Weekly Tournament. That is right now planned to be the Tuesday morning 10 a.m. tournament. Uh, what I've been told, and again, this could change, is that'll be a $130 tournament. And what we are going to do is we are going to keep track of who wins those things, who cashes in those things, and we are going to have a point system developed. Uh, John will not have to be involved with that. Um, <laughs> we may leverage his, his formula, but this will not be a John responsibility thing, but we're going to keep track. <laughs> and our hope is that uh, we're going to keep track kind of player of the year who, who in, that, in that particular tournament. And what we're also planning on doing is expanding this idea of having a rec poker weekly tournament to other casinos across the country. Uh, and so we are putting together a program. And if you have connections at a casino, or if you want to kind of take the role of building connections with a casino, with the tournament director or the, the venue operator, or whoever that might be, uh, we can get this to you. Um, uh, so we are trying to put a rec poker weekly tournament in a bunch of places across the country and do the same thing, keep track of all the points so that ultimately we can figure out who are our best rec poker live players. So um, that's something to keep in mind, uh, but that is coming, we are excited. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be out of town the first three Tuesdays that this thing starts, so that's a bummer, but uh, but that we'll open it up for somebody else can win in the first three weeks, I guess. Yeah, just make it a little possible for someone else to sneak <laughs> yeah. in there. For clearly, I win everything. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's coming. So stay tuned. If you want more information, let me know. But um, I, I was told we could say this on Monday, July 26th, because it's not going to air until the whatever that is, August 3rd. So hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully that stands. Uh, another thing, so the road trip, uh, we are going to go with Run Good down to Florida. We got a few of us already locked in there. August 23rd to 29th, you don't have to be there the whole time, uh, but if you're interested in, in flying down there, the flights are pretty cheap, especially from Minnesota, at least down there. If you want to go down there for a few days, uh, we got a house. Uh, we can let you know kind of what that looks like, but we'd love to have another uh, strong contingent down there. I think we're going to have maybe six people, some at the house, some outside of the house, at least uh, down there. So that'll be really fun. And with that, uh, Mr. Somsky, uh, you want to go through some of the home game results, all these people that are waiting to hear their name called? Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, this last week started off with our nightly events. Kelly S. 1962-20. Kelly Stork mm. got her fourth nightly victory of the year. She's a killer. Group seven. Yeah. Mark Bloomberg, fourth, also the fourth of the year. Keck Geek 65, Jacob Kiki nice. got his sixth of the year. That's a 15th life. Good God, Jacob. Mr. Z, 6262, William Zakak. Zakak? Zasek? Zasek? Oh, I don't know. We found a new Iznuma for you here. Anyway, too. William. First one, let's go. Got his very <laughs> yeah. first one. If you want to let me know how to pronounce your name, go ahead. Email you me. Stay, John? You're, send you're a not voice gonna, you're not going to get the pronunciations right until they have like at least three wins or a six. Yeah, you got to win a few right? more. Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, Jacob Kiki was at least six or seven before he got that right. So, well, when him, him and his dad were winning everything, I finally just had to ask him, like, how do you say this thing? Because we're we're yeah. saying this thing two or three times a week. <laughs> then we have Les Paul ninety nine. Michael uh, Pinciero that's got awesome. his first win. So yep. we're talking about a lot first time wins here. Love yeah. Jay Trousers, He's James a great guy Taylor. Too first win oh yeah I, I, oh we were so close to that one steve isn't that the one where we were all on the final table you and i yeah, were like i got top four yeah i just wanted to make sure we were talking about the same tournament but he was good. crushing he was like he was yeah crushing. he was yeah we were at the final table together which is super fun it's been a while yeah. oh yeah i remember seeing that and thinking to myself steve has no chance <laughs> 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 no. I just kept laddering up, baby. <laughs> yeah. right? No, it's true though. DJ Trousers had like sixty thousand chips oh. or something. Like, it was amazing. Way, way to go, uh, James Taylor. Yeah, time. fantastic. Yeah, seemed like a good, good dude too. We we're in the chat, and he's a very good dude. So, congratulations. Nice. And then for another first time win, Dan thirty three fourteen eighty got won the mixed practice event. Mm -hmm. And I think I know yeah. who that is, but if he hasn't gone public there i probably couldn't say it but probably if, I, if yeah. I think i know who that is so congratulations young man mystery person 
Well, whether or not Steve knows you, I congratulate you. He only congratulates you <laughs> if he knows you. I'm only mine happy is unconditional. <laughs> it's unconditional. Okay. <laughs> then we have Evil Roy CA, David Westerveld. Yeah, Dave. And his it, fifth international victory. And it, his dad. We got his dad in the game, too, yeah. I think. Um, John, you replied at the, at the last minute and got him in and... Um, it sounds like he took, well, he cut, wreaked a little havoc too. Actually, I got him in, but then I forgot to reply. So Steve was going here. Did you oh. ever get in or did he just completely ignore you? No, I, I took See, care of it, but I didn't tell culture, him. There's like four of us going, all right, let's scramble the jets. Let's get this person. In. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to make sure, yeah, it sounds like like within like a few hands, he was like the chip leader or second in chips or something. Yeah. yeah. And I think he took, he took Dave out too. <laughs> he yeah. took his own son out in the first <laughs> tournament he was there. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> At least we know they weren't soft playing each other. Right? Yeah, good point. Good point. Then we have Rick the Good Dog. Rick Rock Omen got his third nice. international victory for the year. Such a and then guy. Ivor Big One won hmm. the daily LPP. That's Learn Pro Poker. Oh. So Ivor, whoever you are, you need to contact Jim at rec.poker and he will get you in touch to get your free month at Learn Pro Poker. Yes, sir. So, so John, is that so... Ivor is that so it's our first LPP win but do they have other do you know if they have other ones I recognize that name uh, I know they played before I believe I've said it before so I'm guessing yeah. that is not okay. their first victory but I would uh I'll yeah. look it up here I can figure that out fairly quickly okay yeah I was gonna say because I, I know that name is always at the table wreaking havoc so I didn't know if that was their first win overall but it's their first LPP win so yeah I'm credit. pretty sure I've said the name before so I yeah. doubt so, so free month at LPP, right? That's their, yeah, that's, their that's it. So yeah, email Jim. That's right. Sweet. Awesome. It's, and we're getting closer to heads up. The next heads up one too, September 18th. Sweet. Yeah. Wait, when you're way into Marek Madness. I know you're looking up, uh, I've or anything, anything else on the home games front? No. Um, did you just mention the heads up September 18th? Okay. Yeah, I might have, I probably screwed it up though. <laughs> well, it's September 18th. No, you know, that is Ivor's very first win. Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Overdue. They must yeah, be I know I've seen the going. name. Maybe he's gotten a number of seconds or something, but that is the yeah. very first win. Hmm. Yeah, Congratulations. He's kind of like probably one of the better players that didn't have a win that yeah. least I can think of. Nice. nice. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Somsky. Well done, as always. Thank you. <laughs> relatively uninterrupted too but i think by all, by all Rel relatively relatively by our well state. that's because mark was here and he's actually polite <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> i actually care what mark thinks of me so i'm trying to <laughs> <his> best behavior. <laughs> I, best behavior. <laughs> I don't care what you guys think of me <laughs> <laughs> well yeah you didn't have to mention isn't a uh, you didn't mention spike right. all this week so yeah, yeah he's been on a tear too. Well, Jim, Jim, what do you have? Uh, I know Mr. Jones wasn't able to join us. Maybe you want to give a quick update if there is anything on whether it's book study or seminar or kind of what's coming up. Yeah, well, um, this is going to come out, as you say, on uh, Tuesday the 3rd, which means that on Wednesday the 4th, there's the book study with, uh, with Rob because it's the first Wednesday of the month. And then um, that Saturday, I'll be hosting a study group for the Focus uh, last month, Keith Monkey System Brandt came on and did a little magic show with GTO Plus, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to uh, delving a little deeper into some of that stuff and setting up next month. And of course, every day that the podcast comes out, the chats edition is a Tuesday, and that means that Tuesday night, it's the online plan hang. And I, I'm hosting almost every week now. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm getting more into this year. We're going to bring in some special guests from time to time, maybe a couple of pros or poker celebrities or other fun people just to come in and meet the rec poker peeps. So um, any premium members, if it's Tuesday, you'll find me in the OPA during the home games. So come and steal chips with us and have a good time. Yeah. And just to be clear, if, if the OPA is kind of a new thing for you, we've had it for a while, but basically you can play the home game or not. You don't have to play the home game, but most people are, but you're not, you're not looking at each other's cards. None of that kind of stuff. You're just all on zoom together, yucking it up. I mean, you can be talking about what's going on in the tournament or whatever, but it's just a, it's just a hang it's online play and hang. So it's not like a deep analytical strategy thing. Usually, right. Some people could take it there, but it's mostly just get to know some of the people, put some faces with names, uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's it exactly. And literally just putting faces to names and talking to people 
face to face, getting to know them. Um, it's it's it, and there is like this kind of this group there that shows up most most yeah. uh, most weeks, and we get new new folks every week as well. It's just fun to see to to meet new people. Yeah, I, I really it, it. But you're right, Steve. It's like a fun thing to do. It's more like a a hangout than a, than a strategy hour. That's true. yep yep. Well, anything else that we need to share? Anything else going on in Rec Poker Nation uh, that anybody has? A lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff. Like we say all the time, don't feel like you have to do everything, right? It's figure out what you love to do. If you love to hang out and do the OPA, if you love to like roll up the sleeves and dig into the strategy stuff, figure out where what, next time Keith and Jim are meeting. <laughs> I mean, you know, kind of figure out what it is that you want to do. You want to read a book and study along? Uh, Rob's got the thing for you, you know, so... You know, figure out what it is that you love to do, and then uh, and then do that, right? Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the that's kind of the way to do it. Don't ever uh, let anybody should on you as far as what uh, what you should be doing. Uh, do what and it if is you're listening. You and if you're listening to this and it sounds like fun, come join us uh, here in the chat while we do the recording. It's a great way to hang out and have some fun in the podcast. For sure. Too. Love it. Yeah, I love when people are out there. So, all right. Well, good stuff. Uh, we will wrap it up there. Uh, thanks, Mr. Prashan, Mark Prashan, website amp. Hey, I should let you uh, do a quick shout out. What is what is your website? What is your email? And again, if you didn't write this down or didn't take note of it, get a hold of me and I'll connect you with Mark. But Mark, what is your information? Uh, yeah, I'm website Mark in the home game. So that's probably the most important thing, right? <laughs> uh, no, but website amp.com. That's A-M-P, like Amplify. Uh, that's where you can find any information about, um, what I'm able to do as, you know, uh, building websites. That's my, my full-time job. It's, you keep talking about do what you love and the mm. things that I love are building websites and playing poker. So <laughs> being able to build rec.poker is, is a pretty sweet, uh, Venn diagram for me of those two things. <laughs> I love that. Brings in the Venn diagram too. Even got yeah. a smile on that, right? <laughs> All the analytics are like, oh yeah, Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, Mark, thanks again for being on here. But yeah, Jim John, as always, thanks for being on here. Paul, Martha in the chat, fantastic having you guys. But uh, if you want to check out, you know, if you're if you're not a community member, go to rec.poker, become a community member. All that means is it's absolutely free. But you can post in the forums. You can read all the stuff. You can really engage in a ton of ways as a free member. Once you're there, if you're thinking, man, I kind of like this. I'd like to get more involved in the content and learn a little bit more as part of this community. You can do it with us. Uh, it's, it's 15 bucks a month, but you get 10 bucks off if you use the code rec poker. So five bucks, try it out for a month, see what you think. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. Let us know what you want more of, less of. We crave feedback. So that's kind of the next step. If you're sort of involved and you want to check it out further, uh, do that. But you can also sign up for our newsletter. That's a great way to stay plugged in. Uh, if you're looking for ways to support us, you can go to rec.poker slash support. And we have all kinds of ways uh, financial but otherwise as well like subscribe to this podcast that's huge for us like and follow or subscribe or whatever the term is our youtube channel when you see a tweet retweet us if you see a facebook post like it like these are all things that matter uh, if you want to see this community become bigger and kind of grow and become uh, a bigger part of the poker industry because you love what we're doing so you can support us in a ton of different ways those are very easy ways to do it so we'd love to have you uh, join us on that. But but with that, uh, why don't we thank our sponsors, Running Aces, Casino Racetrack and Hotel, Website Amp. Okay, there's the music. I saw Jim dancing, but I didn't hear the music so well. But thank you, Mark, for John, Website Amp. Great stuff.